What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Sean here with another video for you guys. And in today's video, we have it right here. It's all inside this box right here. And Koda is always next to me. So he's gonna be helping us out. And he's gonna show us what is inside this box. So we got two corals and two fish for these two tanks right here. Comment down below what you think it is before we start the video. Before we unbox everything in here, shout out to saltwatercram.com. No, I'm not sponsored by them. No, they're not giving me a dime for this video. But I've been trying to get a fish for this tank from another online company. It took them like two or three weeks just to tell me they don't have it. So I would have had a fish for this tank two or three weeks ago, but they haven't shipped it. So whatever. Shout out to them. I ordered this Tuesday night. It's Thursday today and I already received the order. So that's pretty cool. Even though this came from ORA, still I ordered it from saltwateraquarium.com and I got it literally two days later, a day later, whatever. But whatever. Shout out to them. So let's open this up. I already obviously opened it up just to make sure that the fish were all right and the corals were all right. If you saw the last video, I went to Reef of Palooza, I bought some corals and this is one of the corals I was looking for. They didn't, believe it or not, I don't know how they did not have a Kenya tree. How do you not have a Kenya tree? This coral is like a super basic coral, easy for beginners. They didn't have it. And if they did have it, it was like half of this size for $50. That's why I did not like Reef of Palooza. Then everything was overpriced, but whatever. I bought this from ORA. Kenya tree, look at the size. I think I spent 30 bucks, 35 bucks, or I don't even remember how much it was. But that this is a fair price right here. Even if $40 for this is a fair price. So this coral is gonna go inside this tank. Like I said, one of the corals I wanted from Reef of Palooza that they didn't have right here. And it's from ORA, so you know, it's a good quality. They have really nice stuff at ORA. If you didn't know what ORA means or stands for or what it is, they um, they breed and grow out corals. Stands for or Oceans, Reef, and Aquariums. This is also from ORA. This whole order is from ORA. Came straight from their facility. You can buy all their stuff from saltwateraquarium.com. So we got another ORA, Sinulera. So it's pretty much this one, but just like yellowish, kind of brownish. So it's kind of the same thing, easy core to grow. This was also something I was trying to find at Reefapalooza that they didn't have. And I think I spent 35 or 40 bucks for this. Look at the size. This is a really big core. This is not no little frag. This is $40 worth of a core. This is a fair, good price. That's why I like ORA. Another core, just let it, we're just gonna let it acclimate. Before I show you the fish, like, comment, subscribe. Comment down below what fish you think it is. This is a really known fish and a really popular fish. So before I show you, comment that down below. And we, right here we got a ORA Oscillaris normal clownfish. This guy is super cool, super colorful. And just look at him. He is really high quality. This is why I like ordering from ORA. All their fish are really nice and they come with good coloration as you can see right here. ORA Oscillaris Clownfish right there, one of them. I'm gonna put them in the bio cube. Just got them acclimating right there. And we're gonna let them acclimate for probably about like 30 to 45 minutes. And now this guy, this is the, this is the, the star of the show right here. This guy's super freaking cool. I just wanna get the Oscillaris because I haven't had one in a while. I mean the regular Oscillaris clownfish because I haven't had one in a while and I just wanted to show you guys that you could still get some cheap fish at a really nice price. The star of the show, this guy's really cool. I've been wanting this clownfish for a really long time. This is an ORA premium snowflake clownfish and this guy is freaking sick. Just look at that guy. He looks super, super cool. He kind of looks like a frostbite, but this is a premium snowflake clownfish right here. And we're gonna acclimate them. We're gonna acclimate them. We'll be back in 30 to 45 minutes. All right, it's time to put the clownfish in. They've been acclimating for a while now. But before we do that, shout out to Jimmy Buckets. Game five against Milwaukee, that game was crazy. If you saw it, you saw it, that game was crazy. He played insanely well. Shout out to Jimmy. So let's put these guys in. We'll start off. Which one should we start off with? Let's start off with the uh, start off with the premium snowflake. 
So we'll just go like that. Come down here. Watch out, Coda. Oh, he jumped right out. Look at this guy. This guy is supremely cool. You can even see the... Oh, please don't jump out. He kind of has like a blue hue around the white. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that is pretty cool. Let me bring him more into the light. Actually, let's just throw him into the tank. Get this, get up close. Just, I'm gonna let him swim out on his own. All right, you're taking too long, buddy. And there we go. Whoa, is he going straight to the anemone? That is crazy. I have not seen a captive bred fish do that. That is pretty crazy. I don't know if he did that on accident or on purpose, but that was pretty cool. I've never seen a captive bred fish do that because these guys are obviously captive bred. ORA is a facility that breeds fish and they uh, have like grow out tanks and they grow coral and clams and they have a bunch of other stuff, but they have clownfish that they breed Dotty backs and some other fish, but they're really known for clownfish mostly. And now for the Ocellaris, the regular guy. This guy's super cool. Ready? Let's see if he. Oh, oh. This guy's kind of tiny, but it's cool. He'll grow up. Let him swim out. Alright, so it is super late. I'll just show you them really quick and actually come here look at this really quick this snowflake I've never seen captive bred clownfish go to near an anemone this quickly so this guy is gonna start hosting the anemone really really soon look at that they usually stay away from it like the ocellaris is. the snowflake will start hosting that you'll see you see how close he is look at that look how close he is I've never seen that before every time I get a captive bred Clownfish, look at that. I'm telling you, he's gonna start hosting that really, really soon. That's pretty crazy, actually, because, like I said, captive bred clownfish usually have a hard time hosting an anemone. It usually takes them a lot, lot longer, but that's pretty crazy. Anyways, like I said, it was like I'm saying, it is super late, so I will show you guys these guys tomorrow. We'll feed them and we'll check up on how they're doing in the morning, but we'll be back. The clownfish have been in the tank now for two days. And what did I tell you guys in the last clip? I said that the snowflake was gonna be hosting the anemone and come here, look at this. It's literally been two or three days and look at the snowflake. He's hosting the anemone. What did I say? This is one of the craziest things that has happened to me with clownfish or even in the hobby. And also what caught me by surprise was not only that the snowflake was hosting it. I literally woke up the next morning and the snowflake was already hosting it. So it was literally less than like eight hours and he was already hosting the anemone. What's even crazier is that the Ocellaris is hosting the anemone also. I don't know where he's at though. I think he's in the back. Hold on, wait. There you go. As you can see, he is hosting it. They have been hosting this for two or three days now. It is, like I said, it is supremely crazy that they are doing this. Like I said, they are captive bred fish. They came from ORA. So obviously they're captive bred because that's something ORA does. But that is crazy. To have these fish super tiny and host an anemone already is mind blowing. But whatever. As you can see, they're doing good. We're going to feed them in the video right now. So let's get started with that. So this is the brand that I feed my fish. I'm going to give them some mysis shrimp. I never feed the whole cube for the bio cube. And especially since we only have two little clownfish, I'm not gonna feed the whole entire cube. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this in half and probably half is still too much for this tank. Well, it is a lot for this tank. Oh, no. Good thing Coda didn't go after this. Let's see if Coda even tries to eat this. No, <laughs> he didn't even like it. Whatever, we'll keep that. We'll use that for another day. And what I do, so I turn off the filter so like that most of the food stays in the tank and it doesn't go into the filter where it can decompose, rot, and just makes the water go bad. So we're gonna feed them really quick. Let me see. Let's try and we just threw a little bit. These guys have been hungry. They eat like crazy too. As you can see, the Ocellaris is already eating. 
I'm not gonna feed them too much, just something so they can eat really quick. Look, boom. These guys are super, super healthy. Put the light, just so you guys can see them eat a little better. Let me give them a little bit more. Oh. Oh, damn. Damn, that thing went to the back. Wait, let me grab it. This is more than enough food for them. But as you can see, they are going crazy for the food. These guys are super healthy. The half that I fed them, I didn't even use the whole entire thing just because one, I don't like to overfeed my fish. Two, they don't really eat the whole entire thing. They just get filled just enough. I like to feed them just the right amount, just so like that the food doesn't go everywhere into the filter. It starts to decompose and my water starts to go bad. So I just feed them the right amount and they're happy with that. I feed them pretty frequently, so they're good with that. Also, look at this, come up one more time. The Ocellaris is hosting the rainbow rose bubble tip anemone. These guys jump from anemone to anemone, so it's pretty cool. Usually the snowflake just stays in the big one, but he does jump around. So they all do it like he just did it right now. But whatever, I thought that was super cool. Also comment down below if you've had a captive bred clownfish host an anemone this quick. I've had a captive bred clownfish before host an anemone this quick, but there's already another clownfish hosting the anemone that was in the tank previous. So he did that pretty quickly, so I wouldn't consider that the same thing. All right, some quick facts before we get out of here and finish off the video. Both of these guys right now are males. All clownfish are born males. So one, eventually one of these guys will become the female. The biggest one usually becomes the female. Let's just say one of these guys dies and was already a female. It can't be irreversible. So once the female is a female, it stays the female until you get another one. It has to be smaller, obviously. So like that, it will stay a male and you already have another pair like that. So right now these guys are males eventually in probably like a year, not a year, probably like a couple months from now, one will become bigger. We don't know yet. It probably looks like it's gonna be the snowflake just because it's a little bit bigger right now than the oscillators, but we will see eventually. One more quick close up of them in the anemone. Yeah, like I said, they do jump from anemone to anemone, which is pretty cool. You'll see them pretty soon. You see, he just jumped right into the other anemone, which is really cool. Let me know what you guys think about the premium snowflake clownfish and the oscillators clownfish. Comment that down below. Let me know what you guys think. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Peace.